Hey guys, AJYT Abbott here, and welcome to a movie review, and today we're going to be talking about Tom and Jerry. <laughs> this is a uh, recent film that was supposed to come out last year, but HBO Max took, a, took advantage of this and uh, is releasing it this year. So yeah, Tom and Jerry has have, is having their first theatrical kind of outing since, uh, since the 90s, so pretty exciting stuff there. I still like the 90s film. A lot of people didn't like it because they talk. Uh, but yeah, not, lots of people are hating on this film. And I'm going to be straight with you guys. I went in. I, I didn't think it was going to be all that much. And it was good. I enjoyed it. Uh, it's not. It's nothing amazing. But, I mean, it's definitely not a horrible movie by, by any standards. I, I can see how people that like People that are like hardcore Tom and Jerry fans will be kind of pissed about this. Which I mean, I I enjoyed Tom and Jerry. Um, I don't know. I I never watched it consistently. I loved the movie though. The movie was on all the time for me because I had the VHS. So that was just it was always playing for me because I loved loved love singing to the songs and just uh, I loved it but yeah this movie um it's it's not better than that one um well I don't it's hard to say because this one basically this movie is basically that movie but live action because the problem the only problem that is apparent with the 90s version is that they, they focus on this kid Robin too much and in this film they, they focus a bit too much on Chloe Grace Moretz's character um, and, and, and just the humans in general I mean Michael Pena was fun and you know I love Chloe Grace Moretz she's always enjoyable um, and then for those of you that watch uh, Impractical Jokers um, Colin Jost was on there he is the brother of Casey Joe's too. It was the host of Impractical Jokers um, Insider on Impractical Jokers. I, I don't know. I just thought that was a neat little fun fact I'll drop on you guys right there. Um, yeah, it, it was fun. Yeah, there, there was no there was no horrible acting in this by no standards. The acting was was good. The the, the cast was good. Um, Tom sings, but that's the only speaking part in the entire movie, which. I was I was totally fine with that because Tom sings in the cartoon, so it made sense. Uh, they don't yeah they don't say anything else in the film, so that was the one thing that people were worried about that they were kind of hiding. Uh, but no no. Uh, so the, basically the story centers around Tom and Jerry are in this hotel in New York because whenever cartoon characters go to the real world, it's always in New York <laughs> for some reason. Um, I guess it's, that's not the case for Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but whatever. Um, yeah, Tom and Jerry are at this hotel. Chloe's Grace Moretz is kind of this outcast that, you know, no one really believes in. It's, yeah, it's honestly kind of the same story from the 90s version where we have Robin the orphan. No one really believes in her, um, or no, not, not believes, but like, no one... No one likes her, let's be honest. No one likes her. Her aunt is mean, her lawyer is just out for money, and just she's surrounded by a really bad, bad, bad group of people. And she's looking for her dad, who she knows will, you know, be open be open with her and actually like her. This movie, Chloe Grace Moretz, you know, takes on this takes on the, a persona of a woman that went there for went to the hotel for a uh, job interview takes over as that woman and uh, just kind of, kind of trying to fit in so she can find that that balance of people you know liking her because uh, really the only friends she makes is like first going off is Tom and and uh, and this is the bartender guy everyone else is kind of just like oh hey it's you but um, the jokes landed. Most of them did. Uh, I, I will tell you this: they got major points at the beginning, where Tom walks out of the subway and there's a poster in the background with Droopy on it. If you don't know who Droopy is, he's a dog that consistently shows up in Tom and Jerry, uh, 
in, in, in the Tom and Jerry animated movies, I know that much. Um, he's basically the Stanley <laughs> of the Tom and Jerry universe. Oh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he shows up in the, uh, the, uh, later on in the film, but there's a part at the beginning where there's a poster that says, put on a happy face, and it's droopy with the Joker makeup and the suit on. I thought that was absolutely hilarious. That, that was, <laughs> that was so well done. I was like, you guys get points for that. That was, that was very well done. Uh, Slapstick was awesome as always. I, I love that they re, that they, they reused the clips of you know Tom Tom screams they didn't want to go for a more modernized scream they kept that classic classic scream uh, of like that ah you know you know what I'm talking about um I, I I don't know I love that there's a certain charm to that where I, I kind of admire how they just didn't they didn't want to to they wanted to keep at least some aspects of of the classic Tom and Jerry present, so, yeah, the, the characters, um, or, I mean, the character, like, the, the design, like, the CGI, uh, it, it worked, it worked, honestly, there was a mini part where, uh, Chloe Grace Moretz is, like, supposedly, like, holding this, this cartoon cat, and it, it, I mean, hey, it's pretty convincing, uh, <laughs> but, yeah, that, that was, that was well done, there was a few, uh, minor things that I didn't like. It was a it's a trope that some movies do um, because uh, let me do some explaining. Basically, Michael Pena's character acts as the kind of antagonist for some of it, where he gets fired because of a tornado that Tom, Jerry, and um, Spike caused by chasing each other around and around and around. It, it messes up the hotel quite a bit, but Michael Pena's character gets fired for it, and Chloe Grace Moretz gets promoted, so Michael Pena, um, finds Tom and Jerry, because Tom and Jerry have a best friend day, where they go out and do special things with each other, which I know some people might not be a fan of, once again, because a lot of people's problems with that first movie, with the 1990s version movie, is because Tom and Jerry had to team up for majority of it, but I mean, nah, not really, I mean... Okay, I'll, I'll give you. I'll give you this. The the greatest li gift in life is is a friend. That, like that song. Nah, 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 nah. That was not Tom and Jerry esque at all. That that didn't, that didn't belong in the film. But here, it uh, it, it feels good. Honestly, I guess it's because I haven't seen them in a movie for so long. It kind of feels good to just see them pal around a little bit. Uh, but yeah, of course, Michael Pena gets them, um, taken in by, by animal control, and <laughs> he, he kind of, like, interrogates them, it's a pretty good scene, but here's the thing that I don't like, is they do the thing where Michael Pena tells Tom that Jerry has said a bunch of mean things about Tom, and he tells Jerry that Tom said a bunch of mean things about him. So he f basically like flips their ideologies of each other because at that point they're actually really good friends and they're getting along, riding roller coasters uh, and stuff like that. I can't remember if that's something they did or not, but um, because it's a very short montage. I mean, it's not going to leave that much impact on your watch experience unless you're like really, really scarred from them being friends in the '90s version. But, yeah, I'm not a fan of how they do that, because I've seen that so much, so many times, it's kind of annoying. There's a subplot about a wedding, Re really it's the main plot, but it kind of feels like a subplot, because, you know, Tom and Jerry. Uh, and then Chloe Grace Moretz's arc, her arc. And they seem like they're setting up a romance, but it doesn't really go that much of any place with her and the bartender. But, yeah, Colin Jost and his... His character, his wife, they're having a wedding, but the wedding kind of gets ruined when Tom and Jerry start fighting, and Ken Jong is in this movie, but, like, he's not in it that much. He's just a chef that's kind of pissed off that Tom and Jerry's, like, running around just ruining stuff. He's not in it that much. I thought he was going to be it more than he was, but just a minor nitpick. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's nothing to really pat yourself on the back for after watching you're just like man I'm glad I got through that it's like nah it's it's it is enjoyable if you're in for a good laugh 
people were, were like, you know, kids are not going to like, like, kids shouldn't be, like, kids aren't going to get into this because of the, the, you know, the adult, not the adult stuff, I mean, like, the characters, the humans, you know, it was like, kid, kids are watching it for Tom and Jerry, it's like, I mean, not exactly, though, because there are some humorous moments within the human conversations where it's kind of, uh, Chloe Grace Morris is awkward, Michael, Michael, well, Michael Pena is kind of very, uh, suspicious, and he's, you know, acting all cool, uh, the, the main hotel guy, the guy that runs the place, he's all charismatic all the time, Colin Jost kind of acts like, like a, like a featherhead most of the time, he's kind of like, yeah, let's, let's do this for the wedding, and the wife's kind of like low-key, like, not happy with it, the wife was a good character, because you had a little bit of a mini arc with her not being happy with the way Colin Joseph's character was, you know, taking over this wedding and just doing it over the top. She just wants a normal wedding. Uh, so that, that was good. I, th I feel like it's enough to keep kids invested, though, because they definitely had enough Tom and Jerry in it for me to stay invested. Because, well, like, the first, like, 15 minutes, it is majority of humans, but it's just setting up these characters and it's setting up future future things in the film it's like oh there's a wedding and then she's getting this job but she stole it from this other woman so that we're gonna have to deal with that later on in the film and they, they yeah the film ends with uh with them making on a makeshift wedding i did like the montage with tom and jerry racing through the streets jerry's like on top of a drone as tom's driving it that was great to see you love to see it uh chloe grace Moretz setting up this this makeshift wedding with Colin Joseph's character for the wife and they they stop the wife's car and they steal the the cat so then the wife has to go to the place where the wedding is and they have the wedding and she says yes and everything and it worked out quite good uh, but of course it, nothing good ever lasts as Tom and Jerry end up fighting near the end but yeah it was it was quite enjoyable because you just you have that you have you have a bit too much human stuff in there but for me personally, it was enough Tom and Jerry where I was like, it's kind of balanced out. And I feel like it didn't really take a toll on the film as much for me personally because I enjoyed everyone that was in it. There wasn't really anyone that really stuck out like a sore thumb. Because there's a side plot, there's like a side character named Joy that like, like she's creepy, like stay away from her. And like constantly she's revealing like, like needed, like valuable information. It's like, oh yeah, thanks, Joy. Like, <laughs> those are like the little things that are just kind of like, oh, okay. I mean, it's some thought was put into that joke because she's kind of treated like an outcast, like Chloe Grace Moretz's character. But by the end, she's kind of a, uh, you know, taken charge and she's very uh, important. She's valued and <laughs> you get a little mini character arc with that. But regardless, uh, it, it was a pretty good film. Uh, I would give it an 8, I would say. It's not better than Malcolm and Marie. Uh, I haven't found anything that's better than Malcolm and Marie yet this year. Um, maybe Tom Holland's Cherry. I'm very much looking forward to watching that. Uh, next movie review should either be Coming to America or like Raya and the Last Dragon or Chaos Walking. One of those three. But until the next one... Uh, let me know what you guys thought of the film down in the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, and goodbye.